proven benefits of green tea are it improves your brain function and it makes you smarter. It increases fat burning and may lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. It improves dental health. I've forgotten about five, six, seven and eight, but what I do know about green tea is that it resembles someone who is relaxed, calm, in control and zen. How do we establish a shift from pubs to tea houses? How do we create more green tea drinkers in construction? How do we remove the stress? How do we make the lives easier for construction workers? <coughs> My name is Doug Zuzik and I've been in the construction industry for the past 14 years in the technologies capacity. My past eight years has been at Richard Crooks Constructions and previously at Whiteform Constructions. An, interest, an interesting story um, from my career is um, I was I was in the had a brief to assist the president of all things of, of East Timor, and it was to um, assist him with his IT. And um, I went over to East Timor a few times, and the hotel I was staying in it had bullet holes in the hotel room, and, and when we would drive there'd be three cars, and when we go around a corner, he would be in the middle, and I'd be on the the hit car they called it. And, um, but it was, a, it was a really, really interesting time and there was, there was, there was copper cabling that was stolen from telegraph poles and I don't know if you remember but there was an assassination attempt on, on the president and um, he was flown to, to Darwin at the time and uh, there were plenty of army all around and, and um, I had this one question I needed to ask him and um, it was probably the last thing on his mind but I went upstairs and there was army all around and there were close relatives in his room and I said, Mr. President, did you want me to update your Blackberry? <laughs> um, so I've been involved with over 300 uh, construction site establishments from an IT technology and systems perspective, and I'm really keen on driving new initiatives and projects. There are some of the photos there. You can see the one on the left is with the um, Malaysian Army, with the UN. They're a, um, a tall bunch. And on the right, that's um, Jose Ramos Horta, they're the President. And uh, just a couple of photos from that, that story. Changes to 2025. As said to the software resistant to change, the construction industry in Australia is not seen as having a great record about embracing innovations or new ways of working. The two key factors that have been and will continue to drive change from now until 2025 will be the generational change. More millennials will enter the workforce. This will continue to increase from the majority from the baby boomers. This might see an expectation change of workings, or perhaps the millennials will have be more responsive to change. Technology will continue to be used as an enabler to improve process and construction. And this will be seen primarily in three different areas, being digital technology, off-site manufacture, and building materials. Some of the key industry challenges are the lack of automation on site, there's a lot of manual and inefficient process on site. Maintaining project controls, especially when managing multiple projects across time, cost, quality and risk. Ongoing high levels of industry regulation. A competitive market with tight margins. People and resourcing is extremely challenging. And big bold changes, they take time. Change management and implementations cannot be underestimated. It can be like herding cats. Integration of multiple applications produces a significant amount of data. This slide here is seven key drivers that, that, that I see, uh, particularly from a head contractor's point of view, uh, a, a, a reason or why they would sort of change a manual process into a digital process. And um, the first one is, is cost, and, and it's always an easy one to say that it costs $1,000, but implementing this change will cost $500, you've got a strong case for ROI, it's pretty easy to get put through. Time and efficiency gains, how we can improve our, our program schedules. Compliance, contractual requirements. Um, we've noticed a lot, particularly in head contracts and client requests, um, that it's been documented that, that there is a requirement for electronic document management. There is a requirement for operational maintenance manual systems to be used. Uh, there is a requirement for BIM to be used. Environmental, quality, how can we reduce our defects and improve client satisfaction? 
and safety, WHS, how can we reduce our injuries on site? There's a ton of solutions out there, there's so many solutions, there's so many options, and just to name a few, within digital technology, you've got BIM models, uh, building it twice digitally and physically, field technology, capturing data on site, such as injuries, blockchain, smart contracts, ability to use a digital ledger, a ledger automatically pay subcontractors when a section of work has been completed. Not only that one hasn't been put through yet, but I think that there's a huge, um, there's a huge opportunity that's faced in the future, if it could get put through from regulation. RFID tracking, ability to identify where material or resources are located on site. X-ray scanning existing structures, investigate concrete structures and determine the cause of deterioration. Drones, site surveying, identify volumes for excavation, site planning. Augmented reality, defect walks, mark hazards, safety issues, geolocation, tracking of resources, vehicles and machinery. Robotics, bricklaying, and I'll show you a video a bit later. Electronic document management, storing of project documents. 3D printing, building models or building materials. Off-site manufacture. There's been a big, big increase, particularly within pods and, and bathroom pods. Prefabrication, assembling components of a structure off-site. And modular building, sectional prefabricated building made off-site. Big data analytics. Internet of things, sensors in machinery to monitor operating conditions, performance levels or physical states. I think particularly on construction sites there's things such as noise levels we need to adhere to with councils, there, there, there's vibrations which we need to manage, um, which will all have a, a, a place for internet of things. Mobile applications, utilising smartphones and tablet applications to capture and report on information. Predictive analytics, ability to use data and factors to predict a result. New and innovative building materials. These are just a couple. Self-healing concrete, bio-concrete that can self-heal cracks. Transparent metal technology. Cross-laminate timbers. Ability to, to, to get up to seven layers of timber glued together to form structural panels. The video I've got next, I'm not sure if you've seen it before, it's been around for a while, but it's, it's based on a company in, um, it's called Broad Group, they're in China and it's how they put up a 30-storey hotel in 15 days. And I think when you sort of look at a program, when you look at a, a company like this, you can see how, how prefabrication, off-site manufacture, uh, doesn't just um, improve a program, it annihilates a construction program.
with so many new and innovative solutions, it can become very easily almost paralysed by choice. It's important to establish a process to understand what these are, what the level of maturity and what the benefits are to the business. There is a potential for construction businesses to rush out the roll out of these applications or not provide a structure or process resulting to the business to gain any benefit at all. To manage changes effectively, an example might be to establish a register that allows input from all areas of the business and provide visibility. An example of a process might be a staged approach such as the discovery phase. Understanding what all these innovations are, um, they might be digital technology, they might be building materials. These come from building cadets, they come from new people coming into the business, they can come from overseas trips, they can come from conferences like today, they can come from partnering with startups. The next phase is about trialling them, undertaking a trial, not being scared to sort of set some trials up on, on projects and, and, and uh, of, of the products and assessing what the true business benefits are. Establishing a position within the business for endorsement and implementation. The critical component is implementation, particularly around change management and training. Any new digital process that creates data should or has to be part of the information strategy and systems architecture within the business. <coughs> Construction organisations are producing more data than ever before. It's important to have a systems architecture in place. Data should be centralised and legible. A systems architecture, similar to the one here, would establish three layers. And these include the operational application. As you can see at the top there, you might have a job costing system, a CRM system, site-based forms, um, RFID material tracking. Data might come through from drones. Data might come through from Internet of Things. And then you consolidate that through. Some people have spoken today around APIs. So, the importance of APIs is the ability that you can transform that data into one central place, which is that green section there, the data foundation layer. Then all your reporting applications being your dashboard reporting, your board level reporting, your forecast reporting, you can all come out of the one place and all your numbers become consistent. And I think, um, and the other, the other benefit is that any new applications can be added or replaced, or, or replaced and, um, and they're all serving a purpose. Previously, the nirvana of a system architecture would resemble one which was an all-in-one ERP type approach. With so many new applications and in a period of so much change, I believe that the best of breed approach is more suitable for construction organisations. While decisions in the future, I believe, will continue to be made on gut instinct, I believe data will provide an, an objective view that will greatly assist. Some of the construction insights. Once data is consolidated, it will provide an enormous amount of benefit to the business to understand trends and patterns. Some ex examples of how data can be used might include KPIs, lead and lag indicators, forecasting scenarios based on cost, resource and project, notifications when a specific situation occurs, and understanding the factors that can affect profitability. One, I believe, can add a lot of value. We understand, the single, we, we understand the single impact of a project. For example, if we have a high number of rainy days on a project, we can expect project delays. But what if, what if an outcome had multiple contributing factors? These are all hypothetical and very fictional, but I'll give you a good example of this, what I'm getting at. What if we knew examples are more frequent on projects when during the excavation phase on a project, which we could get from our project schedule, when the weather's greater than 40 degrees, which we could pick up from our weather station, when the site manager's tenure is less than six months, which we could collect from our HR application, there are no safety walks that have been conducted for a period of more, two, more than two weeks. Based on all these four conditions, an alert was issued to, to advise caution that there is a high risk for injury. What if we know jobs have 30% less defects when we have no missed ITPs, inspection test plans, which is from our site-based forms, a subby has adequate resourcing throughout the project, which we could collect from our site diary, projects are completed in metro over regional locations, which we could get from our project register. Based on these three conditions, an alert was issued to advise we're in a position to reduce our defects on site. 
What if, what if we know we've previously saved margin on a project when our non-conformance notices are nil? We've missed no on-site toolbox talks. We received more than three prices for key trades during tendering. RFIs, our closeout rate is within 10 working days, and we have less than six days of rain. Based on these five conditions, an alert was issued to advise we're now in a position to save margin. Some facts around data. Construction organisations are generating more data than ever before. Data can be useful to any role in construction. It doesn't matter whether you're in finance, you're a site manager, you're, you're, you're a project manager, you're a CA. The bigger the pool of data and the more powerful the reporting will be. Consolidating and aggregating. A common struggle is the ability to consolidate fragmented applications or platforms. It's where an organisation of, say for instance, 30 concurrent projects might be using different systems for the same purposes. This can cause significant inefficiency within a business. If there is consistency across the business, it will improve training and allow for the staff to work seamlessly across multiple projects. Once you, can, once you consolidate across multiple projects, you'll start to identify systemics or patterns within the business. If this data was non-competitive, say for instance safety, and shared across the industry, it'll provide powerful insights and trends. That's what I've got up there on the diagram. Leveraging data for price and jobs. Cost estimation is the most important preliminary process of any construction project. It's the process of predicting costs required to perform work within the scope of a project. Accurate cost estimation is crucial to ensure the successful completion or could lead to many pro problems such as delays, unexpected variations or financial loss. Data can be collected from previous projects to improve accuracy in future estimates. It will help estimators understand previous project or trade performance. If this information was available to our estimators and cost planners, it could reduce risk and provide more certainty in the numbers, particularly in a larger organisation. The ripple effect. Because technology is never truly at a finishing stage, its role within the industry will continue to grow and evolve. Like any change, it will have a flow-on effect. If a manual process is changed into a digital process, they'll, they'll see a need to particularly increase our focus on information security, particularly if now we're using digital processes operationally and there's a dependence within the business to, to, to use data. We need to maintain and, and, and put more emphasis on, on information security. Increase the dependence on data integrity, increase the dependence on application reliability, and increase mobile data usage. Mobile data usage in 2025 will continue to rise. On construction projects, it will be used to assist with essential services such as your lift, your gas, your nurse call, but not to mention your tablet devices, your wearables, your smartphones, your time-lapse cameras. I've drummed up a term and it probably already exists, but I've called it the smart construction business. In 2025, I believe there'll be a clearer distinction between your smart construction business and your not-so-smart construction business. These will be businesses that are digitally aware and they'll embrace change. The differentiators of a smart construction business will include they'll have an established information strategy, they'll, they'll, have, they'll establish consistencies and standards, and they'll roll out applications business-wide. They'll establish a process to trial new innovations and developments. They'll be benefiting from big data and analytics to assist with decision-making. Decision They'll have an established information security strategy and they'll be open to change. Here's a video from, uh, which I found online. It's, it's from Peak Drones, which I don't know, but the video is awesome. It gives really good insight into how drones can benefit construction sites on site.
It's the 3rd of March, guys, ladies. In 2025, Michael Fisher is a site manager at the new ANZ, because they still sponsor it, stadium in Homebush, Sydney. It's 5.30 a.m. and he gets a hologram. No, it's not a hologram, it's an automatic alert on his new iPhone 12. It says the weather forecast is to be 40 degrees and his construction schedule is reporting a concrete pool. There is a risk that the sur there's a risk of surface drying and, and recommendations are provided to his iPhone 12 to, to mitigate. Michael gets to site at 6.30 a.m. and he opens up the gates. Hundreds of subbies start walking through the gate, beeping their way through the RFID register. Michael pulls a few aside with recently expired licences. At 8 a.m., Michael does a toolbox talk. Michael uses his new tablet, which is able to interpret what he's saying in different languages for the Chinese trades on site. It's 10 a.m., and a crane is hauling in 50 new prefabricated bathroom pods to site. Drones are above checking for access issues into the stadium. The electricians are upset. They've roughed in the wrong heights for the cable runs. Michael brings up the latest BIM model and works through the issue. At 10.45 a.m., Michael's still working on the BIM model issues and issues various RFIs and site instructions to the client. At 11 a.m., Michael gets an alert that the noise sensors have hit maximum decibels for the neighbouring properties. He better fix it before the council issues him a fine. At 11.30 a.m., Michael signs off the jib rockers' work. They're paid instantly as they've set up a smart contract. It's nearly lunchtime. Michael checks the project dashboard and can see there are no performance related issues. At 1 p.m., Michael checks his resources on site. He's got 124 workers, but there's a flashing alert which is saying for the project to reach its target, it needs at least 144 workers. The head office are already across it and they're meeting with the subby tomorrow. It's 3 p.m. and Michael's notified of one of the electricians who have ventured into a high risk area of the project. He's picked it up through his RFID tracking. He shouldn't be there, he's onto it straight away. At 4 p.m., Michael checks out his outstanding defects from stage one of the project. They've reduced. He's noticed that the subbies are using the QR codes that have already been set up around the stadium. What does construction technology mean for the site manager? It's likely a site manager's role will change in the next eight years. As the process becomes digital, it'll change their day-to-day -day activities. Some of the key benefits from the change might include less time doing administrative type tasks, increased transparency, more than just a monthly report or a weekly phone call, reducing the silos, establishing a shared responsibility, problems or issues will be more visible, which will allow additional support from other areas within the business. The site manager could become more mobile, is starting a new project midway through that have all access to all the information to hit the ground running. What could a site office look like in 2025? The key to establishing a successful site is performance, reliability and reducing delays in getting the site up and running. I believe over the next 84 months there will be an increase in mobile data usage such as Telstra 5G services, or, which will take over fixed data services. Wireless will be used instead of fixed network cabling. Tablets, laptops, smartphones instead of desktop computers. And paper light, maybe not paper less. There will be an increase in BIM managers and BIM coordinators on site, which will have additional requirements. The NBN may be available, but due to the time it takes to get services set up, might not be suitable, particularly for your green and brownfield locations. It might be a matter of providing staff with a phone and a tablet device, then they're set up on the company Wi-Fi and can move easily between projects and site offices. Will the site office exist anymore? I believe sites will have amenities, lunch rooms. The site offices might not have allocated seating, as you can now work from anywhere. The induction rooms will no longer exist as they've already been inducted online. This next video is based on a, is from a, a company in Perth called Fast Bricks. They're a, um, they've got a 3D robotic bricklaying system, um, which is an incredible innovation which can change the bricklaying industry.
at the end of the day, it's paramount for any construction business to harness technology to remain competitive and relevant in the face of an ever increasing demands from our clients. But how good would it be through technology we could say that we've improved margins, improved the efficiency of our program schedules, built more projects that are better quality and environmentally friendly, get our staff home on time to see their families, reduce injuries or even save a life, or increase the green tea drinking culture in the industry. The only thing I will know for certain is that as technology advances, so will the industry as a whole. Thanks very much. Cheers.